So talk to me a little bit about what Vow for Girls is doing. And I, I really appreciate that. And you, you're using your platform to draw attention to this issue because it is one that very much needs more attention, more eyeball, more heart, more funding, yeah. like if we're going to see a different outcome for girls. So I run this organization, Vow for Girls. We were founded almost five years ago by two people who had been deeply involved in the global movement to end child marriage mm. and had been successful in you know, bringing together groups from around the world who were focused on the issue, making it part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, like really getting it on the agenda. Mm-hmm. But they really came to believe that real change on this issue was not going to happen unless it was happening in communities themselves. Because mm-hmm. someone at the UN or you or I, we may have lots of ideas about what, <laughs> what should happen in communities. But the real truth is that that change doesn't happen in a place like, you know, Uganda or India or mm-hmm. DRC or wherever, unless it's people who are from those communities, like really championing a different outcome. Right. And so they created Vow for Girls to raise awareness and funding and to be able to put that money directly in the hands of local leaders who are running effective, but like massively underfunded mm. programs and organizations. So largely local women who are directly engaging in the lives of girls and have been doing it for quite a while mm. and are really in a position to be those change agents Mm. in their communities. I'm just curious, like, I'm thinking, what does it look like to change this in a community? Because you need to change the, you need to to change the community. You need to change the family. You need to change, you need to uh, help the girls see this is not right. Like that seems like a lot of people involved in the change. It does seem like a lot of people. And that's why proving this model has been so important over the last five years, because you know, we've invested in in the in the first four years, invested in around 175 of these local organizations. And we're in places where the issue looks really different. Mm-hmm. So like somewhere in the Dominican Republic, where we have around 30 organizations that we support, we intentionally chose and invested in leaders who wanted to do that kind of community engagement that you're talking about, right? So they're they're working with schools, they're working with parents themselves, yeah. they're working with the the police, with local religious leaders, sort of mm. building this consensus that our community is going to be better if girls are able to make their own decisions about about marriage. Got it. And seeing great success in that, and sort of building consensus at the community level, where it goes from well, of course, we're going to marry our girls all to, well, of course, we're going to let our girls make their own decision about this. And we're seeing that real change on the community level, place to place. So much of this, though, is really important engagement with parents. Yes. Like, it's something that across our grantees, no matter whether or not they're working on things related to education, like helping girls stay in school, or things related to economic opportunity, like helping girls learn to make money so they can contribute to their to their families, or things about their health, making sure that girls know how pregnancy happens, how to avoid it. Right. For all of these things, they're engaging parents because parents are really critical to seeing this change yeah. because they're so often the one that, that's saying yes or no. Right. I mean, that's what I like. I literally, you, how I started this conversation was like, what parent would do this? And then now I'm seeing, they're seeing it as protection, which, you know, then I also go to, well, you know, at a time in America when, contraception is being put out as a as optional and maybe not available for yeah. for women that seems like now we're only going to see a spike in more of these child marriages because if we can't make contraception you know easy for girls to get the pregnancy rates are going to go up which means parents are going to double down on this and i this is just topical right now because of the political scene here in america that if we don't have access, if girls don't have access to contraception, we got a bit, you all, you know, in your organization now are going to come back and be like, it's not 12 million anymore. Now it's like 24 million because parents are going to double down on this protection. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, cause <laughs> so many, of like I was, I was with a group uh, last year and we were talking to parents about what's their experience around their, their girls being in this group. And 
like the parents like sharing with us that they were learning things about sex that they had never known oh my god course or in this yeah in this program and things about their bodies that no one had ever told them like now my daughter is the one who's like educating me about this awesome. but you know i i agree like if, like things like contraception being used to oppress like and withholding conversation contraception being used to oppress that's exactly the kind of thing we're, we're addressing in terms of making sure girls are not only aware yeah of of how their bodies function but also have the resources to be in the sort of driver's seat if you will of, of those decisions where does that education happen because it's not happening in schools so where is a, a girl gonna get like i remember when my kids were in teenagers there i'm in silicon valley i raised them in silicon valley there were like really cool programs that you could like send your kid to and they would teach them everything. You know, if you were a parent that was like, I don't want to sit down and have this conversation. There was like, okay, they can teach them everything from contraceptive to contraception, to uh, respecting your body, to how to have great sex. Like just, let's just bring it out into the light. And it was really popular here in Silicon Valley in families that were wanting to help their, you know, both. And it, there was a girl's class and a boy's class. So yeah. how do, how I'm now thinking just about communities that don't want to talk about it, schools that are not going to put it on the, on the curriculum, where, how do these girls get this kind of access to information? It's funny what you described seeing in Silicon Valley is one of the ways that uh, girls are getting this ac access in communities around the world. So one of the number one sort of interventions that our community partners are implementing are the creation of girls clubs or girls leadership mm. clubs, sometimes boys and girls clubs together, largely to function as after school type mm. activities. But regardless of where they happen and when they happen, the, the things that I see being similar as I've visited so many of them is giving girls a safe space mm. where they can come together, mm. where they can learn about everything from you know, what their rights are to some uh, basics of financials and money to um, like sort of hands-on skills that they could then use to like make things that they could sell for mm. money, like, you know, on, on and on. But largely though, they give them a, a space and a mentor figure that right. they can both share about their lives and learn. And if their future is somehow at risk, they have someone to go to. Yeah. Like we were in Nepal and I, met this young woman who said, who like, she was 15 years old. She very matter of factly said, I've been in this program for two years. Last year, my parents came to me and she told me, they told me that it was time for me to marry. Wow. I said, that's a violation of my rights. And I knew that because of this program. And I told them if they married me, I would go to the police. And they <sighs> said, oh, we won't do that then. <laughs> like, wow. like very matter of fact, very matter yeah. of factly. Like, so I think like one of the biggest things that's happening in these programs that we support, whether or not they're safe spaces or whether or not they're like sports or drama clubs that are teaching girls about their rights while building their agency, it's an opportunity for them to learn. Like I am a person with rights. This is what my, con like my, like, and all, oh, I didn't mention this, but in all these places where we're working, the practice is illegal. It's just happening at a tremendous rate. Wow. So so, you know, they, they learn about their rights and they know what to do if, if someone is infringing upon them. Yeah. That, and, and what I hear in that, that's power within. That's it. Yeah. You know, it's, and, and this, is, this is the interesting concept that I've been really trying to teach to women is that there's so many places we give our power away. And for like the lens that I've been teaching my following is like, we give it away when we go in the doctor's office and the doctor and we say, we like list off a bunch of things that are symptoms that are really hormonal changes that are going on in our body. And the doctor writes us an antidepressant prescription. Like all of a sudden we, that's where our power has been taken away. So when you educate a woman and you say, Hey, when you go into the doctor's office, here's the questions you want to answer. You want to ask, here are the things you want to think about. If they hand you an antidepressant, like stand up for yourself there. And what I heard is that's exactly what you're doing. And, and we could, yeah. we could put that across to all these disempowering places is like if we're going to bring the 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 and i want to think of another word other than power but bring the awareness of an equality of women up it's going to actually what i'm hearing that you're doing is it starts with 
the woman. It doesn't yeah. start necessarily with pointing fingers at the culture. It starts with teaching right, the exactly. woman. Yeah, exactly. Because I think that no one's going to win with the pointing fingers yeah. approach. Yeah. Right? Like, it's and so it's smart. why someone like me can't like show up in a community and be like, you got to change this. Like, never going to work. Yeah. Like, absolutely not. And so this, this, while this sort of girl centered and the consensus approach takes more time and isn't like, you know, you know, it's social norm change, right? Yeah. Like, we're leading, our, our local partners are leading, yeah, leading the social norm change in their communities and seeing real change. But we believe that this is the only way that it's going to stay because yeah. like once, once you stop this practice, you're not, you're not going to be starting again. Like, right. But once you stand up to your parents and you say, you can't marry me, what else can, you know, that, that girl do in her life? Like that's, exactly. that's like the door in to empowering a woman. Now she gets to, you know, do that over and over yeah. and over again, which is. <laughs> we, yeah. Agreed. We were, we were in Dominican Republic and met with this woman who we've been funding for five years. And I was like, you know, what's the biggest change that you've seen over the last five years? And without, without missing a beat, she said, five years ago, the girls would come into this program. I couldn't get them to say a word. And now they won't stop telling me what they think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. That's dangerous to the society. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. I love them. I like, keep talking. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, it's much easier to keep us quiet. So, wow, that's so cool. What do you do about the, the girls that already are married? Like, I, 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 like it's really, this has been helpful for me because I now see your long-term vision and it's so in alignment with women's empowerment for me and what I'm trying to do. Like, my win is when a woman comes out of the doctor's office and she feels like she was an equal. She feels like she had yeah. a collaborative conversation. I'm like, yes, because you, you, you educated yourself and now you can stand up for yourself. So I love yeah. this vision of let's change it at the, at the, change the girl and empower the girl. What about the girl that's already in the marriage? What about maybe she's 10, 20 years into the marriage? Like, is there any help yeah. that we can give her or that woman? So, so, so what I can speak to is that so many of our local partners are working to make sure that girls who do become child brides still have opportunities. They still get to finish school mm. or, or mm. girls who may have a child early, like what in the wake of uh, the pandemic in Uganda, a lot of girls became pregnant while schools were closed. They had the longest school closure in the world. Oh, wow. uh, and one of our partners who we fund there, who's more of an advocacy organization, forced a change nationwide that had said that pregnant girls could not be in school. And like, it, it, which opened school for thousands of girls who had become pregnant, like during the, during the pandemic. Wow. And so, you know, I, I definitely see and hear partners talking about who are, I don't know how to phrase it exactly, but like supporting girls' decisions to leave unions, like at different points, but that's not a sort of core thing that our grantees are focused on. Like primarily the fun. It's hard. And yeah, it's really hard. We're providing is about prevention of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. on this topic, it's way easier to to prevent than to actually pull them, dismantle them from the the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So, talk a little bit about the biggest challenges that Vow for Girls has, and you know, how can we support you? How can we lift you up? Like, what you know, what what maybe some of the things that you have coming down the road because I'm really hoping people in my, in my world see why it's important to support you all. Yeah. I mean, I think that the, the biggest challenge overall is one of uh, awareness, yeah. certainly, right? Yeah. Uh, people not realizing that this is such a global problem that it happens on the scale that it does. Um, and I'm hoping that through this conversation and other ways that, you know, your listeners might interact with us, that they see that not only does this exist, but there are also really tangible ways that I can do something. About yeah. It. Like, you know, we, we provide a mechanism to empower incredible local women who are real heroes to me yes. and because they are standing up to often like centuries of tradition in wow. their, in their communities and saying like, we deserve different and better than this. Wow. And you know, we're a mechanism through which to directly support those organizations. We also like for readers for whom this is important, like we run a, a model where 
foundations and generous individuals pay for the operating costs of the organization so that 100% of everything that's donated goes right to these community organizations. Amazing. And uh, so I'd say like awareness is a big challenge. I think too, just like, you know, building like it's a challenge of, of the last five years has been like building uh, sort of a community at scale around around this work. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we've been able to to work with like so many in, incredible people who like we do some work with brands who make us part mm. of their 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 business. Like, yep. we work with individuals who are having celebrations themselves and like mm. make say like, oh, instead of gifts, like, why don't you donate to this cause? And also just people who directly support us as part of their personal philanthropy. Mm. And you know, while while money. Like, well, every nonprofit, you could say it, every nonprofit yeah, wants yeah, money. I mean, this is why we're doing Give Every nonprofit own. wants money, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, reason, the reason we exist is to yeah. to support these local women, these local leaders, and it's the dollars make the difference. Yeah.